All right, we're going to do the integers reality check. So uh, hopefully this helped you guys out. Okay, we got these two charts. We got calorie intake and then calories burned. What would have been really nice is if uh, for calories burned, they had used the negative values because this unit is based on integers. And we're going to need to keep that in mind when we start listing some of these values, okay? Because calories burned, since it's value uh, calories taken off, uh, I don't really know the medical jargon for that, so forgive me, but uh, since it's burned values, we're going to use negative integers to represent the average calories burned per hour. Like, like we have the lists of calorie intake here on the left, and then on the right, we got the calories burned. So just, just to start with number one, right? It says, Marta has a plain bagel and a banana for breakfast, a turkey sandwich for lunch, and a glazed donut for a snack. Now, all of that stuff is listed in the calorie intake because it's food, right? But then, all the calories burned, these are all exercises. And it says she attends a yoga class for two hours and then swims for one hour. So that's the information it gives us. Then it says, A, write a mathematical expression of Marta's calorie intake using positive integers. So the calories intake, right? She... It says that she had a plain bagel, which is right here at 75. So she's going to take that 75 calories in. And then she's going to have a banana for breakfast, which is up here at 48. Now this is all calories she's taking in, so I'm going to add those together. Then she's going to have the turkey sandwich for lunch, right here at 360 calories. And then finally... A glazed donut for a snack. So that shows right here at 340 calories. So this is the expression we want for part A. And that's all we want. We just want her calorie intake. So we're going to add these together. Uh, well, we can add them vertically. 75 plus 48 plus 360 plus 340. And we get a 13, 8, 12... 18, 22, 5, 8. So it looks like Marta took in, or she increased her calories by 823. And I'm, I'm going to label that with calories, C-A-L there. Now that's just part A, just wanted her calorie intake. On the other hand, for part B, it says it wants her calorie expenditure. That would be calories burned. And it does say specifically to use the negative numbers. So, for this one where it says that she goes to yoga class for two hours. Well, yoga class shows at 220. And if we look at the labels up here, it's average calories per hour. So, not only did she burn 220 calories, that was just for one hour. She's going to do it for two hours. And then it says she goes swimming for one hour. So that's the 600 right there. Now, the 600 here. Now, it did say, right, and I said this, it, it says use negative integers. It's all calories burned, so we need to show these as negative values. And we're going to add these together. So from here, um, right, we could do 2 times uh, 220 which would be 440. And uh, since it's negative, it would be negative 440. And then plus another negative 600. That's a 6. So um, I know I'm adding two negatives, so I just know my answer is a negative. But I'm going to add the two values together. So plus the 600, 1,040. So... Uh, since it's a negative, it's calories burned, and she burned 1,040 calories. So that's the answer to part B, because that it just wanted her expenditure of calories. Then part C says, write a mathematical expression of Marta's total calorie count. So it's calorie intake, which is 823 calories, plus calories burned, which is the negative 1,040 
calories. I should use the right color on that one. So negative 1,040 calories. Now we're going to add these together, um, which will tell us the total calorie count for Marta. So in this case, I'm adding, but I'm adding more negatives than positives. So I know she's burned more calories than she's taken in. And from there, I can just take the big number, 1,040, and subtract the small number, 823, which would give us, uh, let's see, it's a 3, 10, 1, 217. So it looks like she burned overall 217 calories on the day, at, at least as of now. There's another problem that's going to uh, add and subtract more calories. Now, I know one of the common complaints we get as math teachers is, I, I, when am I going to use this, or how reasonable is this question that's being asked, right? Like, people are like, well, what am I going to do with 64 watermelons? You could eat them, okay? And I love watermelon. I don't know like, if I could eat 64 at the same time, but I could eat 64 watermelons. And I would bring up the same question with this one, because Marta had just a glazed donut. Is there anyone that you know that eats only one glazed donut? I don't know either, okay? But it works for mathematical purposes. Just trying to get some practice, you guys. So that was nice. So for Joe on number two, he has a bowl of cereal for breakfast, a roast beef sandwich and an apple for lunch, and a soft pretzel for a snack. He rides his bicycle to and from work for a total of two hours and lifts weight for 30 minutes, one half hour. For Joe, then, he's going to have a bowl of cereal for breakfast, uh, which shows here as, a, as a 190 calories. And that's what we want in part A. Write a mathematical expression of Joe's calorie intake using positive integers. So first, he's going to take in 190 calories from the bowl of cereal. And then he's going to take in calories from the roast beef sandwich at 450 calories. I don't, I, I don't count calories, you guys, so I don't know if this is a lot or a little, but you guys can decide. And then an apple for lunch. Bam, 90 calories up there at the top. And then a pretzel for a snack. Where's my pretzel? There it is. 340 calories. So Joe's living it up on his soft pretzel. Let's go ahead and add these together. We got 190 calories, 450 calories. 90 calories and 340 calories. Let's add these together. So there's nothing in the ones place. 9 plus 5 is 14, plus 9 is 23, plus 4 is 27. So I'll carry the 2, plus 1 is 3, plus 4 is 7, plus 9 is 16. Well, that was not the 9. So 7 plus 3 is 10. So Joe takes in 1,070. Again, I need to label that because this is a word problem in calories. Next up, we got Joe's calorie expenditure. Well, what did Joe do? He's going to ride his bike to and from work for two hours. So where's his bicycle? Cycling, there we go. He's going to go two hours, 500 calories per hour. So it's a negative though, right? Because it's being burned. And then Joe's going to lift weights for 30 minutes. Where's my weight lifting? 300, right? but only for a half hour. So you can use the fraction, you can use the decimal, it's really up to you. And that's uh, 300 calories on that. So we're gonna add these together. That's gonna tell us how many calories Joe burned. Now, just like we did with Marta, this strategy in one and two parts A and B is the same as using the order of operations to combine all your negatives first and then your positives second and then combining positives and negatives to find a total value. So in figuring out how many calories Joe burned, 2 times negative 500 is negative 1,000, and then 1 half of negative 300 is um, 150, a negative 150. So Joe burned 1,000, and then another 150 calories, that's uh, 1,150 calories. But again, this is... Uh, being burned, this is being burned, so we're going to show it as a negative value. And then to figure out how many uh, calories Joe has either burned or taken in, 
uh, or just total count of calories from the day. Um, we're going to take how many calories he took in from his food, 1,070. And the calories you burn from exercising, 1,150 calories. And we're going to combine those. Okay. Now here I can see that he burned more than he's taken in, right? So I got a uh, negative value for total calorie count. And I can just take the big number, 1,150, and subtract the smaller number, 1,070. So I got, uh, looks like that's going to be 80. Okay, so Joe has burned a total, total sorry, of 80 calories on the day so far. All right, number three, Marta and Joe decide to have dinner at their favorite restaurant. Joe has the spaghetti dinner and Marta has the grilled salmon dinner. After dinner, they go on a walk for an hour. Write a mathematical expression of Marta's new total calorie count for the entire day, which includes her earlier calorie count dinner and going for the walk using positive and negative integers. Well, from number one, we know that Marta's total calorie count was negative 217 calories, right? But then uh, Marta is going to have the grilled salmon dinner, which we can find right here, 380. So that's going to be added to her total. Now, I would figure out the total calorie count right now before I figure out the walk, right? So I can see I got negative 217 plus 380. There's more positives than negatives. So I got a positive value. And then I'm just going to take the big value, 380, and subtract the small value, 217. So that's a 3876, 163 calories. So right now, Marta is at positive 163 calories. And you can determine if that's healthy or not. But then she's going to go on a walk for an hour because she goes with Joe on that walk. So the walk is going to burn 250 calories. So minus 250 calories. Now again, I'm, uh, you could say you're adding a negative here. And uh, since that's the case, we're adding more negatives than positives. So the answer is a negative. Then I would take the big number, 250 and subtract the small one, 163. So there's a seven, that's uh, a 14, a six is eight. So Marta at the end of the day has burned 87 calories after dinner and going for a walk. Now Joe on the other hand on part B, says write a mathematical expression of Joe's new total calorie count, which includes his earlier calorie count, dinner and going for the walk using positive and negative integers. Okay, well, let's look at Joe's previous total calorie count. So Joe, this is from the previous page. He was at 80 calories burned total. So that's the number we're gonna start with. And then let's evaluate what Joe did. All right, so Joe, let's see. Joe had the spaghetti dinner. Oh, that's very nice. Spaghetti with meatballs, it looks like. So from there, we're going to have to add another 859 calories. Now again, from here, I have more positives than negatives. So I know my answer is positive. And I can take the big number and subtract the small number. So that'd be 859 minus 80. So 9 minus 0, zero uh, 9. 15 minus 8 is 7. And we borrow from the 8 to make that 779 calories right now for Joe. But then Joe is going to go on the same walk that Martha did, and we can see the walk burns off 250 calories, so we're going to add 250, but it's a negative 250. Now again, at this point, I have, I have a 779 plus negative 250. There's more positives than negatives, so I know my answer is positive. And I can take the big number, 779, and subtract 250. 9 minus 0 is 9. 7 minus 5 is 2. 7 minus 2 is 5. So Joe at the end of the day has gained 529 calories. Uh, and yeah, I should label that one as well. Alright, so there's our answer again. We don't need to show that positive sign if we don't 
want to, but uh, I would be okay if you did on this assignment. Sorry, suppose Marta goes skiing and Joe goes snowboarding. Marta burns 1,784 calories and Joe burns 1,948 calories. So part A says, how many hours did Marta ski? And we'll write an expression with the negative integers, right? So it says that she burned 1,784 calories. Now it's burned, so it's going to be negative. But it's asking how many hours she skied, right? So in other words, if we look at the skiing up here, it's at 446 calories per hour. So uh, since it's calories burned, you could even show that as negative. So we're just asking how many of these 446s are in uh, 1,784. That's a division problem. So we're going to divide 1,784 by what really would be negative 446. And again, that's calories per hour. Uh, when we divide this, and uh, I'm not going to use long division. I would actually just use a calculator for this one just because it's the reality check. A negative 1,784 divided by negative 446. We know the answer is positive, but it should be 4. And again, just don't, don't forget to label that in hours on that one. It, it's going to work the same way for Joe in part B. All right, B, how many hours did Joe snowboard? Write a mathematical expression using negative integers. Well, Joe, let's see if I can get this to work. Joe, he went snowboarding, right? And it says he burned, Joe burned 1,948 calories. So that's a negative 1,948 calories. And again, it's going to work the same way. It's just that it's snowboarding instead of skiing, right? Now, again, that should be a negative value. Uh, he's burning up, but we're, but we're asking how many 487s are in 1948, which is why this is a division type problem. Okay, so we're going to divide this by the negative 487. And as it turns out, when I divide these two together, excuse me, I get four again. So that's another four hours. Now you may be asking yourself, why is it that they uh, burned off different number of calories for the same number of hours exercising? And the answer to that lies in the fact that they burned a different number of calories based on the activity that they're doing. So even though they worked or they um, were snowboarding or skiing the same number of hours, they burned a different number of calories because... Again, they're burning a different number of calories per hour depending on the exercise.